Hello again. It is November 13th, Friday the 13th, and I just wanted to pop in and um, update you all. I Last time I spoke with you, I said I was going to think um, positively and envision telling me she wants to get help and reaching out and I'm continuing to do that. Um, interestingly enough, she did call and leave a message um, and she's still in a high state of mania, but she did say, I think her message exactly was, hello, I just want you to know that you're still loved, but I don't agree with your decisions, Laurel. <laughs> and it was an agitated voice, but hey, she did say you are um, you are loved, and I took that, and I'm embracing that and holding on to it. So, um, you know, that was certainly a step forward, I guess you'd say. Uh, she's also called, and when I say hello, she doesn't answer, and then she ends up hanging up. Um, and I got a letter in the mail from her where she scratched out uh, where it came from, but I could see it was Lewiston where she's at. And um, it had two cards from the game Skipbo, a seven and a one, and I have no idea. It had nothing written on it, nothing, no letter. So anyway, I don't know. I don't know what that's from, but I thought it was interesting. Anyway, um, reading my book every day, and I want to share another little passage with you guys. Um, it says, miracles are merely the translation of denial into truth. If to love oneself is to heal oneself, those who are sick do not love themselves. Therefore, they are asking for the love that would heal them, but which they are denying for themselves. If they knew the truth about themselves, they could not be sick. The task of the miracle worker thus becomes to deny the denial of truth. The sick must heal themselves for the truth is in them, yet having obscured it, the light in another mind must shine into theirs because that light is theirs. The light in them shines as brightly regardless of the density of the fog that obscures it. If you give no power to the fog to obscure the light, it has none. Uh, and that says to me uh, that sickness is a cry for help, that our children are calling for help. And let's face it, guys, we're the ones that are going to give that to them because we love them so much. As parents, we're probably the only ones that can see that light when they are acting ill. And if it is a cry for help, then we need to shine our light into their fog and open them up and remind them that they are loved and that they have a piece of God in them as well and um, that they're not sick. And that's a hard pill to swallow, isn't it? Because we we see them as sick and I'm really, really, really trying to shift focus and see them as crying for help and not sick. So that's it for today, thank you. Hello, I wanted to check in uh, because I have a lot to say and I'm guessing I'm gonna have a lot of edits to do because I haven't rehearsed and yeah, there's a lot to talk about. So, uh, in the hospital, although they are talking about releasing her tomorrow, which she's not ready and that's a whole other story, but this weekend I did an intensive very intensive three-day training with Tony Robbins. Uh, it's called Unleash the Power Within. And the point of doing this was to try to retrain my thoughts and to, I, I realize I need to be stronger as a person, as a mom, uh, to help out uh, through this. And so I'm really trying to, strengthen my attitude uh, because it feels like a huge defeat um, going through this. It's This is a very painful, painful process watching your child seemingly deteriorate 
in front of your eyes and having no control over it whatsoever. So uh, I found this to be really powerful and helpful um, to change my mindset and to find a hope um, that I didn't have before. And I'm feeling pretty confident about this. So I, I just, I don't know. I want to share it with you guys. And it probably is going to sound like I'm going off the deep end, which I, I'm guessing all of us do go off the deep end a little bit. We all lose our mind a little watching our children go through this. Uh, but in this, this instance, I think losing my mind is not a bad thing. Um, I had this epiphany. These trainings you know, would start at approximately between 9 and 10 a.m. and they would go until 11 to 12 at you know midnight and after the third I think it was day three um I just I was exhausted and I decided to take a bubble bath even though it was probably it was after 11 anyway but I these programs you go through a lot of extensive exercising because Tony's theory is you learn better if you keep your state up, um, a peak state, which means jumping around, getting a lot of exercise. Um, you don't really learn when you're bored. And uh, yeah, so I think that really does help. And so I was physically exhausted and emotionally really drained, but emotionally fulfilled at the same time. And as I sat in the bubble bath, um, just sort of meditate, not really thinking of anything, but uh, a flood of information came to my mind. It was as though, it's, it's as though I was receiving information from another source, although it was in my mind. This information came through and it, it's like I felt compelled to share it. And it was sort of like, it was saying that we uh, are born with a plan um, that God has given us each a script and that script is our life. And, um, you know, God doesn't talk, to, God doesn't speak directly to us. Although I felt like in this thought process, God did speak directly through me, but um, we, we go through life with this script and we try to avoid painful situations and uh, we, in that avoidance, we make them worse and we create worst possible scenarios in our head. I think that this, this has happened to us and to me um, to make me stronger. And I think that my change in mindset is going to someday help other people change their mindsets so that we can get through this and we can get our children through this. Um, it doesn't have to be the end. And we've painted this dreadful picture because it seems like there's no hope. And let's face it, God's not going to put us on this planet to have an unhappy ending. Um, why we've all questioned this. There is no doubt in my mind. Every one of us has questioned why, if there is a God, why on, why in hell would he give anybody bipolar or psychosis or any of, I mean, it is, it's an awful, awful thing to go through. Why? And I have to believe there is a reason for it. I have to believe that our loved ones are probably, I know they're suffering, but I'm, praying they're not suffering to the extent that we're suffering watching it. Um, but for us, I mean, we have to become super strong and we have to hold on to an outlook uh, with hope and faith. And I think that's the big thing is faith. And I think that we all have a happy ending at the end of this and we can have whatever ending we want. We do have, we were given free will, so we have a choice. Uh, but God wants us to have the happiest of happy endings and whatever makes us feel good, the best case scenario in your mind of what could happen is what our happy ending is supposed to be because 
God isn't speaking to us directly. God is speaking to us through our hearts, not our heads. I feel like our heads, uh, we have this ego that keeps chattering in our brain and giving us worst case scenarios. And we've developed beliefs, uh, you know, that miracles can't happen. We've developed beliefs that we are powerless and it just isn't true. And God speaks to us in our hearts. And again, if we think of the loving, most best case scenario possible, that is what is supposed to happen. That's how God is saying, yes, you're on the right path because it feels good, it feels right. And it can, there is no limit. I mean, honestly, no limit. I know what I want my outcome to be. I, I've visualized what I want my outcome to be. I want to, to find her path to be healthy. I want I, I feel that she's going to figure this out. She's going to help others in this situation and I'm gonna help other parents and together we're gonna show, show other parents how it's done and that's just, that's what I feel like I was put on this earth for. So I'm gonna work collaboratively at some point but right now it's just me and my beliefs. And I was, uh, beliefs are such a powerful, powerful thing and I was thinking about it, our beliefs determine our lives. So that to me seems like um, a law of the universe. What you believe is what you will live. And it's really hard to change beliefs that been, have been a pattern for so long. And that's what this Tony Robbins thing is breaking the pattern. He has very intensive strategies to do that. And I think it broke through this time. And I think that he's done that for me. And um, I'm going to continue to perceive the best possible outcome because I'm holding on to the, to the belief that God has already healed she she is what I'm seeing in the future. She is this healthy, beautiful, happy, successful individual that I know she is. And I see it so clearly. Um, and I do believe it. And I, I that is going to bring us to that, that ending. And I'm going to help guide you guys by uh, taking these videos and what I've learned and together walk walk us through this because I'm determined to have the happy ending that God wants for me and for her, because I am very sure that that's how it's supposed to be. And I just hope, um, I hope that other people see the hoops we've gone through, that I am right where you are at today. My daughter is in a hospital. They, you've all seen this. They drug them to the point of lethargy. Uh, they're saying she is ready to go, which she clearly is not because we're talking 10 hospitalizations and I've seen it every time. And that kid is still in her manic state, but they've drugged her enough that she's compliant. And I know this um, because she still won't talk to me. And we know she's getting better when she stops believing that mom's the devil, basically. And she'll want to come, you know, she loves her mom very much. And when she wants to reconnect with me is when we know she's actually getting better. And that is, uh, that's how, I mean, again, that's not our first rodeo. That's how it's been. And she's still not speaking to me. So there is no way she's ready to be released. Her dad and I are going for guardianship. It has taken a lot, it's emergency guardianship and it's been a good week and I've run all over Kingdom Come to get things signed. I went to the hospital, I hand delivered it to the courthouse. It was not a fun process. It's been long and grueling, but I've got to believe that that was supposed to happen. Um, I, I, I'm envisioning the best possible outcome 
And I'm telling you, it's it, if, if I if I weren't in the state of mind, it would be looking pretty grim and I would probably be very stressed out because the hospital is saying she's ready to go. She has a phone appointment today at two to talk with the placement she's supposed to return to, which they don't think she's ready. And they are concerned because they think she's gonna just fall right back into the same pattern and they're right. Uh, so she's gonna be talking with the hospital staff, them, and then the state, which has another potential placement that might be a better fit for her. Of course, I won't be involved in this because I don't have guardianship yet. And um, so I just have to sit and wait, but I'm gonna, I've got it in my mind that the right thing is going to happen. And even if it's not the outcome that I think I want, I'm going to embrace that outcome and I'm going to hold strong to the belief of where we are headed because I know my belief is more powerful than any of this other stuff in between. I think um, when we fight against things, we make it bigger. So everything's energy. So if I fight all these decisions or fight, if, I, if I'm thinking the worst thing is going to happen, then the worst thing's probably going to happen. So I have it in my head, no matter what, I'm going to move forward knowing what the outcome is. So everything in between, that's just the universe doing its thing and I can fight it or I can roll with the punches and still know my outcome. And sometimes, you know, you hear one thing and it changes last minute, so that's my that's my talk for today. I hope it helps somebody. I'm going to probably be on here more often because I feel like it is my calling and my duty to do so. So thank you all for listening. I love you all so much. I'm here to help you and help you help yourselves and I will be back in touch. Hi there, it is Monday, November 23rd, and I've already created a video, but I just wanted to do as I promised and share with um, everybody that it is um, 2.15 p.m. And right now my daughter is on a conference call with um, the director of her residential placement and the state and I believe her social worker at the hospital, because she's at the hospital, and the social worker thinks she should be released tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so that outcome can go several ways. The residential home doesn't think she's necessarily the best fit there, and I know the way these things work, and if that home doesn't take her back, which I think they will if it's if it's that or the streets or God knows I hope they will. But yeah, best case scenario from what I could predict is that she stays in the hospital until she's actually ready and until we can find um, the best the best fit for her upon release. But no matter what the outcome, I'm going to try very hard to be positive, but I'm extremely, I have that feeling that we've all had of um, worry, but I'm, I'm trying to let that go and to trust that again, uh, the right decision is going to be made. So whatever the outcome is God's will. <laughs>